So there's a new TikTok trend where people are reading Osama bin Laden's letter to America. And I went to Google and see what this was all about. So I Googled Osama bin Laden's letter to America. And I got this hit, which was um, from the director of national intelligence.gov. And it's interesting. I'm not going to say this isn't a letter from Osama bin Laden to the American people, because uh, it could very well be. But it's not. But there's another one. Uh, that I also found. So, in this letter, Osama bin Laden basically lists his reasons for attacking the United States. And he says, you attacked us in Palestine, uh, you attacked us in Somalia, he supported the Russian atrocities in Chechnya, the Indian oppression against us in Kashmir, the Jewish aggression against us in Lebanon. Under your supervision, consent, and orders, the governments of our countries, which act as your agents, attack us on a daily basis. Now, I, I shouldn't even have to say this, but examining the motives of Osama bin Laden doesn't mean that you support his actions or justify his actions. Uh, violence against civilians, terrorism, is wrong, is bad. That uh, should be obvious to all right-thinking individuals. Um, only the most extreme fanatics rationalize violence against civilians, or at least the targeting of civilians. Although, it's noteworthy that American foreign policy routinely accepts violence against civilians as collateral damage, so long as they're not the actual target, which is scant comfort to the civilians caught in the crossfire, but at least slightly more defensible. I, I don't think it's actually defensible. I don't accept this, this notion that collateral damage is justified. Uh, my, my moral compass says that A's aggression against B doesn't justify B's aggression against C. Um, but I'm not the one in the situation room. So, uh, there's certainly some validity here. I mean, there's no question that uh, the U.S. government uh, has propped up puppet governments in the Middle East that oppress their people. You look at what was happening in Yemen. There was a Western puppet uh, elected with 100% of the vote. And... And then uh, the Iranians, they, they overthrew him and put in their own guy, their own puppet. And so they're going to war, you know, over control of that country. And, uh, and the Yemeni people are suffering as a result. Uh, these governments steal our Uma's wealth and sell them to you at a paltry price. I guess he's talking about oil there. I don't know. $80, barrels of, uh, $80 a barrel is hardly paltry. I mean, there's a reason that the Middle East guys are so rich. These governments have surrendered to the Jews. So there's a lot of anti-Semitism, a lot of hatred of Jewish people, um, which I guess stems from the whole Palestine situation, or who knows. The removals of these governments is an obligation for us to make Sharia the supreme law and regain Palestine. I, I wouldn't want to live under Sharia law. That's for sure. Uh, a lot of issues there, you know, injustices with regards to how they treat women. And, I mean, any sort of theocratic government is usually not the best. You don't, you don't find a lot of, like, ideal theocratic governments throughout history. We steal our wealth and oil at paltry prices. This theft is indeed the biggest theft ever witnessed by mankind. In the history of the world, your forces occupy our countries, you spread your military bases throughout them. That's another contention you had, uh, the, the U.S. military bases on the Holy Land in Saudi Arabia. Uh, obviously, the, the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, very close allies, very, uh, 
very strongly connected there, selling all the oil, whatnot. You have starved the Muslims of Iraq where children die every day. It is a wonder that more than 1.5 million Iraqi children have died as the result of your sanctions, and you did not show concern. Yet when 3,000 of your people died, so this is, I guess, after 9-11, uh, I guess they said 2002? Um, the whole world gets up in arms. So uh, Iraq, you know, there was two wars there. Even in between the wars, there was bombing, there were sanctions. Famously, Madame Albright was asked, you know, do you think the death of 500,000 Iraqi children was worth it? And she said, yeah, we think it was worth it. Not perhaps the greatest phrasing. Um, and I guess, you know, the counterpoint to that would be, well, Saddam Hussein's a dictator. He tried to invade Kuwait, you know. The international community's got to do something when... Nations are getting bellicose, which I guess is a strong point, too. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that the people are the ones who suffer and that these sanctions all can end up propping up the regimes. You look at uh, Cuba, the U.S. has been sanctioning, embargoing, uh, making them an international pariah for a long time, and that has only empowered the Castro regime Regimes, because now it's his brother or cousin or whatever. Second uncle, twice removed. Who can forget your President Clinton's immoral acts committed in the official Oval Office? And after that, you did not bring him to account. Other than that, he made a mistake. You are a nation that permits acts of immorality. You are a nation that permits the production, trading, and usage of intoxicants. You are the nation that permits usury. All right. A little economic illiteracy mixed in with the rage. Yet you build your economy investments on usury. There's nothing wrong with lending money for a profit. That's crazy. Come on, Osama. You can do better than that. <laughs> I guess you can't blame him. I mean, he's been hiding. He was At this point, he'd been hiding in the caves for 20 years trying to avoid uh, American GIs, so... Didn't have the opportunity to study like a man of uh, leisure might. Uh, something about Allah. Uh, AIDS is apparently a satanic American invention. I mean, this gets worse and worse as it goes on. He, he had me like, you know, for the first quarter or whatever... When uh, when he's talking about Palestine, Somalia, these are sort of seem like more legitimate grievances. Again, not not to justify 9/11 or any attacks on civilians, you know. But if he had been attacking American military bases or embassies, maybe I don't know. Uh, it would it would be less because there's no question that it, that uh, the U.S. has attacked the Middle East. I mean, Iraq twice, Afghanistan. The, uh, the invasion of Yemen uh, was done with American military equipment. Obviously, the U.S. and Saudi are close allies, so they're, they're supplying a lot of that. In fact, they were even doing uh, some limited um, like logistics and support operations throughout the combat. And then, uh, of course, Afghanistan, where the Americans were there for like 20 years and uh, didn't accomplish anything, spent trillions of dollars, and you now the Taliban is back in power. Or you look at uh, Syria, where uh, the U.S. was covertly backing rebels to try to overthrow Sadat. Uh, and uh, and what happened, you know, you had a civil war, a massive uh, Syrian diaspora, and uh, just tragedy visited upon the Syrian people, you know. Uh, the American people are the ones who pay the taxes, which fund the planes, the bombers in Afghanistan, 
the tanks that strike and destroy our homes in Palestine, the armies which occupy our lands in the Arabian Gulf, and the fleets which ensure the blockade of Iraq. These tax dollars are given to Israel for it to continue to attack us and penetrate our lands, so the American people are the ones who fund the attacks against us. I don't think that's legitimate because uh, the American people are as much victimized by the American state as, as uh, maybe not as much, but certainly to some degree, they're also victimized by the American state in the income tax. I mean, it's the political elites that make these decisions, not the people. Democracy is, is, uh, is really just a, a way of rationalizing the state's rule. And uh, I don't think you could hold the people of the Middle East responsible for the things that their dictators do. I personally do not hold Americans responsible for the actions of George Bush or Barack Obama. Uh, I, don't, I don't think they have that much control over their political class, although the political class would like us to think otherwise. Also, the American army is part of the American people. This is the very same people who are shamelessly helping the Jews fight against us. Uh, so that's how he rationalizes hitting uh, hitting civilians, I guess. And then uh, he's calling on people to fight. Yeah, the first half is really a lot better. The second half, a lot of moralizing. And uh, oh, really? He brings in Kyoto, the Kyoto Agreement, is. Uh, is Osama bin Laden really like a base climate climate chad? <laughs> you refuse to sign the Kyoto Agreement. I don't. I'm skeptical. Obama even Osama even wrote this. Your law is the law of the rich and wealthy people. All right, that's a point. It has to bring the Jews into everything. Your duality in both manners and principles and values. Your hypocrisy in manners and principles. Okay, fair point. When the Islamic Party in Algeria wanted to practice democracy and they won the election, you unleashed your agents in the Algerian army onto them and to attack them with tanks and guns, to imprison them and torture them. A new lesson from the American Book of Diplomacy. I haven't, I haven't read anything about that. I'll have to check that out. Algeria. Your policy on prohibiting... And forcibly removing weapons of mass destruction to ensure world peace. It only applies to those countries which you do not permit to possess such weapons. Again, hypocrisy. And for countries you consent to, such as Israel, they are allowed to keep and use such weapons to defend their security. You're the last ones to respect the resolutions and policies of international law. War criminals. And then, uh, yeah, it goes on like that. So, uh, I don't think it's it's a bad thing to read what your enemies are writing about you. I think that it's important to understand their point of view. Uh, Ron Paul raised this point during the election campaign when he was running for president. And he said, you know, the first thing the police do when there's a crime is they look for motive. They're not trying to excuse or rationalize the actions of the criminal. They're just trying to understand what happened, get in their mind. So, uh, is there blowback from American foreign policy? Like Ron Paul said, you know, they're over here because we're over there. So, if you attack and, and uh, intervene and prop up all these dictators, then, yeah, there is a chance that you can get... Uh, uh, things could get a little messy. That's my perspective uh, on this whole Osama bin Laden thing, you know. Uh, geopolitics is a complicated and messy place, and uh, I think it's positive that people are at least trying to understand the perspective of the Muslim world and why they're so angry at America what legitimate grievances they might have, and what irrational and illegitimate grievances they might have uh, going forward. 
you know, let's uh, let's hope for peace and let's all be humble in, in accepting the limitations of our understanding and what we can do to make the world a better place.